Thank you. Honorable members, the next speaker is the Honorable Mukhebani, and it's a maiden speech. Thank you, uh, Chairperson C.S.T. Malima, Chief Whip of the EFF, Chairperson of the EFF. We take this opportunity to reiterate the condemnation of the genocidal violence that is being meted out by apartheid Israel over the people of Palestine. The people of South Africa, the continent, African continent to the world must know that the war mongering colonial settler apartheid state that is waging the war in Palestine is not the biblical state of Israel, but a group of bloodthirsty, racist and colonial invaders who are supported by the imperialist West, particularly the US, the UK, the Western Europe. Now coming back to the statement by the Minister of Electricity, on how load shedding will be reduced. It is not the first time that the political leaders from the ruling party have made commitments about load shedding and there is still no believability and credibility Order. in their statements. And uh, it is not the first Honorable time Mkhevani, well in more than one Honorable Mkhevani, please take your seat. Honorable members, I indicated that this is a maiden speech. And the gestures that you are showing there are not the gestures that we have in our rules. We don't have such. Honorable members, please. This house is too small for you to make such noise. Proceed, Honorable Mkhevan. In more than one occasion over the last five years, the president of the ANC has assured the people of South Africa that load shedding will be things of the past and things just got worse. At the beginning of this year, the Secretary General of the ruling party said load shedding will end before December 2023, and there are no scientific and engineering demonstrations and evidence and signs that load shedding will end under this government. Despite the many assurances given by this minister, who oddly does not have a dedicated committee to report to here in parliament, load shedding will remain and will get worse as long as the ANC is still in power. The EFF's roadmap to electricity dependability articulated by the CIC Julius Malema and Deputy President Floyd Shibambu are the only solutions that will end load shedding in South Africa. It is illusionary for anyone to think that and believe that you can end load shedding without securing base load electricity generation and supply, which in this instance is coal, nuclear, hydroelectricity, and conversion of gas into electricity. At the center of South Africa's electricity problem and crisis are the independent power producers who are imposed in our country by the imperialist West and forced into ESCOM without any rational and sensible basis. We have to expose the hypocrisy of the West who instruct us to close down our coal power stations when millions of tons of coal are leaving South Africa every day to go build and bolster Western and Eastern economic giants, creating ghost towns, perpetuating unemployment and poverty. We accept that electricity generation must not destroy the environment, but we cannot close down electricity generation without viable and concept proven sources of electricity. Electricity that is harvested from the sun and wind is inherently and therefore not reliable. It can be used as a grid solution, not as a long-term electricity solution for South Africa. That is why the proposal and submission of the EFF that a specialized conditional grant to assist municipalities of grid solution must be given due consideration. The efforts of the EFF in a grueling in sourcing base load electricity on what can illuminate into BOT built operator a transfer contracts is the best model that must be replicated the whole of South Africa. ESCOM must, as a matter of agency, seek to extend Quebec nuclear power license for an additional 20 years and must consider a BOT model for additional nuclear energy, which remain the cheapest for uh, electricity in South Africa. South Africa must accept that in the foreseeable future, there is no electricity solution 
that can exclude coal as a source of energy. If anything, we should invest in coal clean technologies. We as the EFF will, during the course of November 2023, finalize the action plan on what are we going to do when we take over government from May 2024 onwards. We are aware that as part of the ruling party's election strategy for 2024, they will go around making empty promises and commitments on things they know they cannot deliver. The people of South Africa must know that it is not only the EFF working within the best interest of the country. We have black professionals in the energy sector who will end low shedding in South Africa. The rest of the political parties are just talking and electioneering. People are suffering, people are losing work, employment is high, businesses are destroyed because of an, uh, this uh, issue of electricity. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Yeah, I'll say you can uh, reintroduce the, the speaker. Hon Honorable, thank you. We may proceed. Honorable members on the virtual platform, I'm making this request for you to visit your gadget wherever you are and switch it off, M uh, mute it, please. You are disturbing the proceedings in the house. Especially hope. Just hope. a, re a reintroduction. Uh, <laughs> Honorable Ngola, please don't do that. You repeat that, you will be out of the platform. Honorable Sengwa. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, those who are most vulnerable socioeconomically bear the brunt of the impact of extreme weather patterns as witnessed in KwaZulu-Natal in 2022, and again more recently, buried in mudslides, drowning in floods. Yet they are part of a continent that is home to 18% of the world population, but contributing a mere, a mere 4% to the global emissions that leads to climate change. Chairperson, the Economic Freedom Fighters agrees that South Africa needs to develop policies that will ensure that we respond effectively to mitigate climate change disasters in a manner that will lessen the impact on our citizens. But this government has failed to use the available mechanisms already in place. Given the inevitability of these climate-induced disasters, we need to have effective adaptation measures to climate change. These include improving our capacity to foresee disasters and climate fluctuations and developing measures to adapt to these. The ANC can't even keep the weather monitors functioning. We do not believe that this current ANC-led government possesses the wherewithal to respond adequately in the event of climate disasters to drive South Africa's transition to a low-carbon and climate-resilient economy that will enhance the country's ability and capacity over time to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Chairperson, the Portfolio Committee for Forestry, Fisheries and Environment was under pressure to finalize this bill from a condensed public hearing schedule to finalizing the wording of the bill. The incentive to finalize this bill as fast as possible was the Just Energy Transition Investment Plan, where the funding commitment was increased from 8.5 billion US dollars to 11.8 billion dollars. The Just Energy Transition Investment Plan gives effect to the Just Energy Transition Partnership signed at COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland, two years ago. Wealthy developed nations are pledging $11.8 billion for South Africa to transition from coal-based energy generation to renewable energy. Wealthy nations have developed their economies using coal to the detriment of the environment. Developing nations now have to bear the brunt of that advancement and are told that they need to transition from carbon-based energy sources to renewable energy sources. According to the Just Transition Framework released by the Presidential Climate Commission in June 2022, South Africa will reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. We are concerned that the Climate Commission is centralizing the presidency from the process of appointment to determinations of functions, potentially giving the Presidential Climate Commission super ministerial powers to dictate to other ministers. We need to ask why the developed world 
which is largely responsible for the climate crisis we are facing, is so invested in dictating South Africa's development choices. South Africa is part of a continent that merely contributes 4% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, and yet South Africa, with the rest of the continent, are being corralled to pay the highest price for the West development choices over the past few centuries. <laughs> Fortunately, Chairperson, 2024 elections are around the corner, and we can assure South Africans that an EFF-led government will ensure that our wealth and natural resources is used in a climate-friendly way to create jobs and livelihoods. The EFF-led government will officially adopt the civil society-driven One Million Climate Jobs Initiative as a government program. Through this initiative, the EFF government will create one million jobs aimed at transitioning South Africa from coal-based energy sources to renewable energy. These one million jobs will have to meet certain criteria, decent jobs that are safe, economic development that is driven primarily by people and not profits, an EFF-led government will be actively involved in creating jobs that address climate change, employing and training new climate workers and retraining workers where necessary. Workers must be given opportunities for retraining and re-employment in new climate-friendly sectors. A just transition means prioritizing the needs of working people in the social and economic disruptions that this transition will involve. An EFF government will ensure that development of these industries do not become an excuse for lowering wages and social benefits, and that these new jobs provide opportunities to redress gender imbalances in employment and in skills. We urge all South Africans who have witnessed the failure of the ANC government in dealing with climate disasters when the poor and the vulnerable are affected to register to vote for the only party that represents the poor and the vulnerable. The EFF does not support this bill. Thank you very much.